regular meeting of the February 15th, 2022 Minneapolis Business Inspections, Housing and Zoning Committee will now begin. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Business Inspection, Housing and Zoning Committee for February 15, 2022. I'm Jamal Osman and I'm the vice chair of this committee. As we begin, I will note for the record that this meeting has a remote participation by the members of the council and the city staff as, as authorized Minnesota statute section 13D.021 to the, due to the declared local public health emergency. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city website and YouTube channel as means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. At this time, I will ask the clerk to call the roll as we verify a quorum for this meeting. Council Member Rainville. Present. Council Member Ellison. Here. Council Member Chavez. Present. Present. Council Member Chugtai. Present. Council Member Goodman. Present. Chair Osman. Present. There are six members present. Let the record reflect we have a quorum. The agenda of today's meeting is before us. I will begin with the consent agenda, which includes items 6 through 15, 25 on the agenda. Item 6, liquor license approval. Item 7, liquor license renewal. Item 8, McField Center for Music for 2020-2021 Annual Report. Item 9, 2022 Women's Final for Designated Large Events Zone. Item 10, Street Vacation, 3724. 3742 Nicollet Avenue. Item 11, Alley Vacation. Alina Health, 2855 Chicago Avenue. Item 12, Rezoning for Humboldt North LLC, 209 Humboldt Avenue North. Item 13, Rezoning, 1312. 8th Street Southeast. Item 14, pre zoning 1314, 8th Street Southeast. Item 15, pre zoning for MPHA, 2910 25th Avenue North. Item 16, Minneapolis, pre zoning Minneapolis Public Housing Authority, 2811 Emerson Avenue. Item 17, the land sale for 1910 25th Avenue North for MPHA. Item 18, it's another land sale for 2807 through 2811 Emerson Avenue to MPHA. Item 19, it's a public housing Authority audience, affordable housing, right of first refusal audience. Item 22, bird scythe building audience. Item 23, commercial property sale audience. Item 24, tenant protection audience, referring to the staff. Item 25, short-term rental audience, also referring to the staff. Is there any discussion on this consent portion of the agenda, or are there any items that anyone would like to pull off for further discussion? Seeing none, I will move approval of the item 6 through 25 and ask the clerk to call the roll. Council member Rainville. Aye. 
Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Chugtai. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Chair Osmond. Aye. There are six ayes. That carries and the consent agenda is approved. With that, we will move to the public hearing agenda. Item one, Third Space Cafe, 2930 Lindell Avenue. I will invite the staff to give that presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, I'm Mohammed Isma, a lead licensed inspector of business license and consumer services. I'm presenting an application from Third Space owned by ERM Enterprise LLC. The business located 2930 Lindell Avenue South in Ward 10. They currently hold a food, uh, food restaurant and a sidewalk cafe license. The applicant is requesting an on sale wine with a strong beer with limited entertainment. The hours of operation are Tuesday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. On January 20th, uh, 104 public hearing notices were sent to the property owners within a 600 feet of the premises. Notices were also sent to Lowry Hill East Neighborhood Association, the Lynn Lake Business Association, and council member Aisha Chuktai. We have received two responses from the community which supports the new license. There have been no complaints, 311 calls, police calls associated with, this, uh, with, the, with the business. There are no operating conditions or other issues. The Licensing and Consumer Services Division recommends approval of an on sale wine with a strong peer limiter entertainment license. This concludes my presentation. At this time, I will stand for any comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you for your report, and I will see if there's any question from the members of the committee. Okay. Uh, See now I'm going to proceed to open the public hearing and ask the clerk if there are any speakers in the queue on item one. Chair Osmond, there is one speaker in queue, Aaron Ryan Mosley. Thank you. Uh, Aaron, um, it's on the line. Uh, you have two minutes to speak. Please press star six to unmute your phone. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Mohammed, thank you for that. My name is Erin Ryan Mosey and I'm the owner over at Third Space Cafe. We're located at 2930 Lindell Avenue South. Um, well, first and foremost, thanks for taking the time to listen and review our beer and wine and um, limited entertainment license. We opened up our doors on October 1st as kind of our concept um, founded around being a community centric cafe. And with that, within that concept, we are currently offering coffee, pastries, paninis, and then community events at night. So for example, we have candlelight yoga happening at the cafe tonight. Um, incorporating beer and wine has always been a part of our concept, just an extension of our concept as added value to our space and our product, but more so for the community centric aspect that we are trying to foster um, at the cafe. Um, as Mohammed mentioned, our hours will stay open till nine they, um, around. So we're not really looking to be a late night bar or anything of that, more just incorporating beer and wine as an add-on to what we currently have as our concept. We're picturing ourselves as more of a pre-dinner drink and kind of bringing a little bit more traffic back into Lindale, a little bit of foot traffic and um, just expanding our weekend offerings. Um, with that, we have a full menu of sandwiches, salads, flatbreads and appetizers that will be offered um, during the entirety of when we would be selling beer and wine. 
And with that, if anyone has any questions for, for, for me, um, please let me know. I also want to extend an invite for everyone to come visit the cafe. Um, I'm in most all day, so just say that you heard me in this meeting and I would love to sit down and chat. So yes, at this time, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Aaron, for your comments. Is there any other speaker on the line? Seeing no further speaker, I will close the public hearing and I will call Council Member Chuck Tai to make a motion. Yeah, I'd like to move to approve this item. Council Member Chuck Tai moved on item one for approval. I'll ask I'll clerk. Second. clerk. Second. Second. I'll ask clerk to call, to call the roll. Thank you. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Chugtai. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Chair Osmond. Aye. There are six ayes. That carries and that motion is approved. We will now move to the public. We will now move to the next item on the public hearing agenda. Item two, top 10 liquor, 1445th Street Southeast, War 3, for on sale liquor license. I'll invite the staff to give that presentation. Thank you, Council Member Osman and committee members. I am Christina Steefster, Elite License Inspector in Licenses and Consumer Services. I'm presenting an application from Top 10 Liquors owned by Yayin Katan, LLC. This report was prepared by myself, Christina Steefster. The address of the business is 1440 5th Street, Southeast, Ward 3. The applicant is requesting an off sale liquor license. The hours of operation will be Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. On January 24th, 2022, 55 public hearing notices were sent to residents. Um, I'm sorry, were sent to property owners within 600 feet of the premises. Notices were also sent to the Marcy Homes Neighborhood Association the Southeast Business Association and Council Member Rainville. I have received eight responses from the community. Two of these letters support the application. Five were opposed and one was neutral. Of the concerns are the size of the liquor store and the residents wanting a grocery store in that area. The development has not been completed yet, so there have not been any 311 complaints, police calls for service, nor are there any operating conditions on the business that decision makers should know about. The Licenses and Consumer Services Division recommends approval of an off-sale liquor license for top 10 liquors. This concludes my presentation at this time. Uh, at this time, I will stand for any comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you for your report, and I will see if there are any questions from the members of the committee. I'm going, seeing that I'm, I'm going to proceed to open the public hearing and ask the clerk if there are any speakers in the queue. Oh, I see uh, Council Member Rainville. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So I I uh, am looking forward to hearing the public comments. Uh, however, I, I have uh, sat in on several meetings. I want to let my colleagues know uh, that I have heard loud and clear the desire for the neighborhood. Uh, for uh, a grocery store, as well as some sa public safety issues. And I'm committed to working those through. Uh, however, at this time, I will be uh, supporting this recommendation from the staff. Thank, Thank you, you. Councilmember. Rainville, 
With that, I'm going to proceed to open the public hearing and ask the clerk if there are any speakers in the queue on this item. Chair Osmond, there are four speakers in queue, beginning with Omar Torres. Thank you. I will invite the speakers, Omar Torres, to speak. You have two minutes. Please press star six to unmute your mic. Omar, if you can hear us, please press star six. Um, this is John Halper. I'm the owner of Top 10 Liquors and Omar works for me and I think he may have registered for this um, without intending to speak. So I'm not speaking for him, but my guess is that's what he did. Okay. Well, John Halper, you are next. You have two minutes to speak. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you everybody for your time today, uh, members of the city council staff, uh, as well as thank you to the Marcy Homes Neighborhood Association that had a meeting last week that I uh, enjoyed participating in, as well as the Southwest Business Association. Uh, Top 10 Liquors is a locally owned business by me. We have 12 stores across the Metro Twin Cities area. Uh, we're involved in all the communities, our communities where we do business and uh, are very excited for this opportunity to come to Minneapolis. We've been patiently waiting for uh, the right opportunity in the city and the Dinky Town neighborhood uh, presented that to us and we're thrilled to have the opportunity to go there. Uh, we're also strong supporters of Minneapolis. Our offices are in the Marcy Holmes neighborhood uh, and, and we've enjoyed uh, being there. Top 10 Liquors is focused primarily on great product at a value for our customers. Uh, we focus heavily on locally owned uh, or local product uh, with an emphasis on trying to bring in lots of uh, offerings from anyone that is in the neighborhood or the city that we're operating in. And obviously Minneapolis has a, uh, a rich assortment of locally owned product. Uh, Top 10 Liquors is also uh, focused on investing in our people. We focus heavily on training and development of our staff. Uh, we focus on educating our team on diversity and inclusion and on conscious bias so that we're good citizens in the neighborhoods that we operate. We also invest in our team. Last year, we raised our minimum wage to $15 and over half of our employees that would work in this store will make $20 or higher. Uh, the store will also add at least 25 additional jobs to Minneapolis. And we really focus on hiring people in our community and focus on hiring uh, diverse staff in our stores. Uh, we also place a strong emphasis on customer service and really work with our teams to educate them on working with customers and giving them a great overall experience in our stores. Uh, I do know the neighborhood group has raised the size of the store. Part of the reason we want a store larger uh, maybe than was there before is that we go beyond simply catering to the college crowd and we also cater to the neighborhood uh, by offering great wine assortment, doing tasting events and everything to make it more of a community store than simply focused on one area. Uh, we're taking over a space that was previously occupied by a liquor store. Uh, we look forward to being there. Finally, Top 10 is very focused on safety in all the communities we're in. We're leaders in the effort John, to make sure that we you, don't uh, tell the- John, could you wrap it up? You're two minutes up. Sure. Uh, we, we focus on uh, making legal sales, not selling to people under the age of 21, and also making sure we don't sell to obviously intoxicated people. Uh, we, again, look forward to being part of this community, and thank you for your time today. Thank you for your comments. Next up, it's Howard Rosten. You have two minutes, please press star six to unmute. Thank you very much for your time, council members. Um, I'm here on behalf of um, top 10 and I don't have anything further to add than what Mr. Helper uh, said. Uh, I am a member and a resident of the Marcy Holmes neighborhood, however, and I do support it um, in that capacity as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Eric. Wunderlich, I apologize for pronouncing your name, Eric Wunderlich. Good afternoon. This is Eric Wunderlich, um, Chair Osman. Thank you for the opportunity, members of the committee. Um, 
I'm going to speak both on behalf of myself briefly and then on behalf of Preserve Historic Dinky Town. So um, I live in the Marcy Homes neighborhood. I've been very engaged in all of these developments as they've come forward. I am a member of the Marcy Homes Neighborhood Association, although I am not speaking on behalf of the Neighborhood Association. Uh, speaking on behalf of myself, I think that this project really begs the question of the 2040 plans goals of creating walkable communities. If there's not food within walking distance, we don't have a walkable community. Um, and just the idea of bringing in a liquor store that, as John stated, it's going to reach beyond the student committee to community to the whole neighborhood. Um, there's going to be a lot of pressure on those 22 parking spaces. Um, as has been stated, the, the desire clearly was for a grocery store. Um, my understanding is that a grocery store will only locate at this spot if it can be partnered with a liquor store. So this should be held up until there's a grocery store willing to come in. Um, on behalf of Preserve Historic Dinky Town, I'm just going to read this statement. The city has promoted an unparalleled intensity of density in Dinky Town not only in the surrounding residential area, but also within the four square blocks of the historic commercial district. This, the most recent census demographic of Greater Dinky Town comprising the residential and commercial areas between 35W and 15th Avenue and University and 8th Street is 92% rental units, primarily students, and the building of student housing continues. Preserve Historic Dinky Town has been part of a neighborhood University of Minnesota coalition working on a roadmap to sustain the safety and livability of the student community. During city negotiations with CA Ventures, the Marcy Homes neighborhood meetings were packed with students who came to raise three top issues facing them, housing costs, food insecurity, and mental health challenges. Studies show that food insecurity in vulnerable populations, which students are, directly impacts academic success and mental health. All sectors of the Dinky Town community supported the students' top priority for the developer's community benefits package, a real grocery store. The CA Ventures project has leveled two thirds of the Northeast block of the four block commercial district and is approaching final pre-construction phase this summer. Critical decisions are being made that will influence student health, safety and economic outcomes into the future. Preserve Historic Dinky Town is not opposed to top 10 liquors. What we are concerned about is the substitution of a 10,000 square foot liquor store for a grocery store and the challenges this will bring to monitoring, particularly for deliveries, the least controllable sales venue. In your deliberations, the city must carefully consider the demographics of Dinky Town. 92% of residents are rental units primarily, but not all students. Of the overall undergraduate student population at the U, roughly 30,000 students. 75% of these students are under age for drinking. Preserve Historic Dinky Town well, thank also you so much. the request uh, and recommends, is over. just wrap it up, recommendations of the University Baptist Church. Thankful for your careful consideration of these concerns and our mutual responsibility for the welfare and the student population of Dinky Town. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. See no further speakers. I'll close the public hearing. Would any of my colleagues like to make a motion? Uh, this is Councilmember Rainville. Oh. Yes, Councilmember Rainville, please. Go uh, ahead. Yes, I do move approval. Thank you. Thank you. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on item two. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Oh, Cindy Becky. Hi. Council Member Chavez. Hi. Council Member Chugtai. Hi. Council Member Goodman. Hi. Chair Osman. Hi. There are six eyes. That carries and that motion is approved. We will now move to the next item on public hearing agenda. Item three, City Planning Commission appoint, appointment. Considering the council appointment of Joseph Campbell. 
also confirming the following Muriel mer reappointment for two years term beginning on January 1st, 2022 to end of December 1st, uh, 31st, 2023, Anisha Marshall. I will invite the staff to give that presentation. Thank you, Councilmember Osman. We have three planning commission appointments in front of the committee today. Two are reappointments for current commissioners. Uh, that includes Keith Ford and Anisha Marwa, who um, have both been serving on the commission. Uh, Commissioner Marwa just completed a two-year term and Commissioner Ford completed a one-year term and um, staff is recommending both for reappointments. And then we have a new appointment in front of you um, for Joe Campbell. I believe they are all here today. If there are any questions, um, I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you for your report. I'll see if there are any questions from the members of the committee. Tina, oh, Council Member Rainville, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair Osmond. I, I just want to personally thank, I'll be voting for all three of these, and I do want to personally thank them for serving in our community. Uh, we really appreciate your help. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to proceed to open the public here and ask the clerk if there are any speakers in the queue on this item. Chair Osmond, we have uh, Joe Campbell in queue. Thank you. Joe Campbell, please go. Um, and you have two minutes. Star six, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I'm here only to answer questions and share any information that the council may request for me on uh, this particular item. See Council Member Robin Wasley Robo, I apologize. On uh, on the queue, please go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair. Um, I'm I believe you all are speaking in regards to item uh, number four in regards to Venture Academy. Um, I'm oh, coming. We're not. We're oh, not very, not sorry. Okay, perfect. Just want to get clarification. Oh, Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Joe Campbell, thank you so much for your service. Um, See no further speakers, I'll close the public hearing and call Council Member. Council Member Alice. Hi, this is, this is Commissioner Marwa. I also just want to mention thank oh, you. Oh, I haven't I'm gotten sorry. a chance please, to, please meet, to meet many of the new council members, um, but I just want to say it's an honor to serve amongst you all and to thank you for confirming my reappointment. I look forward to it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your service. I would call Council Member Ellison to make a motion. Thank you, Council Member, and I will move to approve uh, this item. I look forward to seeing these folks serve. Thank you. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on item three. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Chugtai. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Chair Osmond. Aye. There are six ayes. That carries and that motion is approved. And now we'll move to the next item on the public hearing agenda. Venture Academy Revenue Bond issue. Assurance, and I will invite the staff to give that presentation. Good afternoon, Chair Osmond and members of the committee. I'm Becky Shaw from the Business Development Department. You have before you a request for preliminary and final approval for the issuance of up to $15 million in tax exempt and taxable charter school lease revenue bonds for the Venture Academy project. Venture Academy is a Minnesota public charter school operating at 315 27th Avenue Southeast with a mission of closing career and college readiness gaps in economically disadvantaged youth with 95% of their student body from low income families. 33% of the student body are English language learners and 25% are special ed students. 
Venture Academy is a diverse open enrollment school. They opened in 2013 and are currently serving 330 students in 6th through 12th grade. The demographic breakdown is 60% Latino, 8% American Indian, 25% African American, 5% Caucasian, and 2% are two or more races. At this time, Venture Academy and its real estate holding company, Venture Academy Affiliated Building Company, are seeking City of Minneapolis revenue bond financing. The bond financing of up to $15 million would enable Venture to purchase the building from the current third party owner, then to finance capital improvements to the educational spaces and to address building maintenance and repairs. When renovations are complete, the school will transition to a ninth to 12th grade facility with the sixth through eighth grade students moving to a separate location at 3800 Pleasant Avenue. As with all conduit revenue bonds, the borrower will be responsible for the repayment of bonds using their own revenues. The bonds will not be secured by any sitting tax, excuse me, city taxing powers or by any assets of this city. I do have members of Venture Academy on the team um, available to answer any questions and I can answer any questions that you have about the project as well. Thank you so much for your report. I will see if there are any questions from the members of the committee and I see Council Member Wansley Worloba on the line. Please go ahead. Thank you, Vice Chair Osman. Um, I am coming before the committee um, with a specific request to have um, the votes on this particular item to be um, postponed until your next uh, committee meeting. Um, my reasoning for that is due to the unfortunate shooting and killing of Amir Locke uh, two weeks ago where we were scheduled to meet with um, the director of Venture Academy. We end up having to postpone that um, and actually uh, met with Mike um, this morning. And then we were also scheduled to have a briefing by staff this Thursday. So I can say as this project, you know, being in War II, um, we want to feel confident that we are have full understanding of the context of this project, are um, hearing from all of the stakeholders, including both within the city enterprise and externally, um, before uh, taking up a uh, official vote on this matter. So that's the request that I want to lay out. And I'm really looking forward to you all being able to learn more about this project, but wanted to make sure that as a council member over in the war where this project will be that we get to have all of the contacts presented to us. Thank you so much, council member, for, for those comments. I will uh, have, I see Allison, council member Allison on the line. Please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, chair. Uh, just wanted to, uh, and I, I support the council member hopping on the call and, and, and giving this request. Um, just two things. One, I wanted to ask Ms. Shaw if there were any sort of like statutory deadlines that we needed to meet or, you know, do we have the room to uh, comfortably continue the public hearing to another another day? Um, well, what we would have to do if we continue or postpone the public hearing, we would have to post the public hearing notice again and then hold a second public hearing. So we could actually hold the public hearing today and then postpone the full vote. Although Eric Hansen might have more information on that. Yeah, and I, you know, just, yeah. So I, I think I think if folks have shown up today to give testimony, they should be allowed to give testimony today, absolutely. And then maybe we could continue so that if more testimony wants to be given from council members after, or from, residents after the council member does some of her public engagement that that can happen uh, on that date as well. Uh, but just wanted to ask those questions because I know sometimes these things can have uh, can have deadlines. So thank you. I see council member uh, Goodman, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not sure why we wouldn't have the public hearing today since it's been posted and move it forward without recommendation, giving Council Member Warnsley Warbla, Warbla uh, two weeks to be able to uh, meet with them and get a sense of it. Neighbors who don't like the land use, um, that's not relevant to us here. 
really the question of relevancy on the public hearing has to do with whether or not they qualify for the bonds. And I want to remind us that these bond issuances, if we, when we do them, fund other programs, small business programs in the city. So I do think that the council member, especially being recently elected, should have the opportunity to meet with them and talk about what they're doing. Absolutely. And I'm not questioning the timing of that. But remember, when we postpone something here in the second day of the first week of the cycle, it's postponed for a month. It's not just a short period of time. So I would urge us if council member Wansley Warloba is going to meet with staff anyway and meet with others in the next 10 days, we could just close the public hearing and move this forward without recommendation, giving her the option to postpone at the council level if the um, answers she gets are not sufficient. Thank you, Council Member Goodman. Is there any other question from the members of the committee? I'm going to proceed to open the public hearing and ask the clerk if there are any. I'll hold on to that and I see Councilmember Chick Tai. I'm so sorry, ahead. just a quick question for staff. I know um, you mentioned that um, we're gonna, if we move forward here, that some of the some of the students would move to a, a secondary location on on 38th and and pleasant i'm wondering if you can just speak really quick to um what exists in that location right now um a, another charter school facility is in that building at this time um to to be completely honest i don't know a lot about that project i i read in the write-up from the um from the school that they would be transitioning over the next two years into this new facility and that they had worked out an arrangement with the other charter school facility. So that's about all I know. And um, I, I would imagine that council member uh, Warnsley will get more information from Mike Warner at her meeting. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. And now I'm going to proceed to the public hearing and have the public hearing today and ask the clerk if there are any speakers on the key on this item. Chair Osmond, there is one speaker signed up to speak, Sophia Leike. Thank you. Sophia Leike, please uh, go ahead. You have two minutes to speak and press star six to unmute. Sophia is the bond counsel for this project and I think that she was going to make herself available to answer questions if council members have them, but she was not planning to speak on the project. Sure. sure. Seeing no further speakers, I'll close the public hearing and call council member Allison from to make a motion on this item. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think that it is uh, totally appropriate and I will take Councilmember Goodman's recommendation that we uh, forward this without recommendation. Um, and uh, and if it still needs more time, we can we can take that up at the full council. So uh, I will move to forward this without recommendation. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, before we move to that motion, I see Councilmember Goodman on the line. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to reiterate out of respect to our colleague in the second ward that if this is not satisfactory, we don't need to take it forward in the council. It'll just be postponed on the council member on the council agenda. But if she is able to meet with staff and the applicant, we can take it up at the council meeting a week from Thursday. So this is just, this is just getting moving it out of committee, not extending the public hearing and letting her do what she needs to do as the council member of the ward. Thank you. And now I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the item and for Council Member Allison's motion. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Chugtai. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Chair Osmond. Aye. There are six ayes. That carries and the motion is approved. 
We will now move to the last item on the public hearing agenda. Item five, in term use permit for Harlem Irving companies. And I will invite this staff to give that presentation. Good afternoon, Chair Osman, Council members. I am Hillary Dvorak. I'm a principal city planner in Land Use Design and Preservation Division of CPED. I'm here for an interim use permit application for the site at 21 Washington Avenue North and 20 North 3rd Street. In March of 2021, the Planning Commission approved land use applications needed for a development, a new development at 21. Um, Washington Avenue North. It was a 28 story mixed use building with approximately 6,000 square feet of ground floor commercial space and 427 dwelling units. That project is slated to begin construction within the next year. However, in the interim period of time, they are right now currently demolishing the Dolphin Staffing Building. On the image in the left, you can see the columns of the existing Dolphin Staffing Building. The building is coming down. What's located on the ground plane beneath the building are 19 parking spaces that the applicant would like to use in an interim use uh, format between now and when construction of this new building begins. They're seeking an interim use permit, which would expire on August 30th of 2023. Uh, as part of this application, we do analyze the zoning code. There are some zoning code requirements that are not being met. Uh, particularly pertaining to the general landscaping and screening requirements and then screening requirements around the parking lot. The image on the right hand side of your screen is the proposed layout for the proposed parking lot that would be in effect until March of 2023. You can see that they are not providing this, the required screening in those green spaces. However, they will provide uh, green space along the streets. We are recommending that you grant those waivers um, to the zoning code as full compliance with the above zoning code requirements. Um, uh, would require substantial investment just to be taken out within the next year. So we are recommending approval of this application before you subject to three conditions. First, that the interim use expire no later than April 30th of 23. Second, that at the end of this interim use permit, if they are not moving forward with construction, they will need to come forward with the applications to establish this as a permanent use if that was their choice. And then that we review the final plans before issuance. I will stand for any questions. Thank you. Thank you for your report. I'll see if there are any questions from the members of the committee. See now, I'm going to proceed to open the public hearing, and I see one person sign up. Neil Perdon. Neil Perdon, if you are on the line, you have two minutes. Please press star six to unmute. Hello, Chair Osman and committee members. Um, Neil Reardon on behalf of the applicant with ESG Architecture and Design uh, prepared the site plan here and just available for questions if there are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, seeing no further spe speakers, I'll ask Council Member Allison to make a motion. Close the public hearing and ask Council Member Allison to make a motion. Thank you, Chair. I'm happy to move approval of this item. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on item five. Council member Rainville. Aye. Aye. Council member Ellison. Aye. Aye. Council member Chavez. Aye. Council member Chugtai. Aye. Council member Goodman. Aye. Chair Osman. Aye. There are six ayes. The item carries and the motion is approved. Uh, seeing no further business before us with no objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you so much and thank you for the staff for making this process a lot smoother for me. Have a good day.